Hey, while you're in the first five seconds of the video, go ahead, like, and subscribe. Luke chapter 2 and verse 4. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, unto Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David. Uh-huh. So this is when Mary would read, read. To be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, uh -huh. being great with child. So this showing that she was being great with child, meaning she was close to the time of deliverance. Of giving birth to that child, read. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished, that the, that she should be delivered. Uh huh. And she brought forth her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. Uh huh. And there were the same country shepherds abiding in the field. Shepherds abiding where? In the field. What time of year would shepherds be abiding in the field? It wouldn't be in the day of the winter. Fall spring. It'd be in the springtime. It wouldn't be out while it's cold. Same way a woman wouldn't give birth. It would be in December. Nope. Because read that again. Read from six. Eight. Luke chapter 2 verse 6 And so it was that While they were there The days were accomplished That she should be delivered And she brought forth her firstborn son And wrapped him in swaddling clothes And laid him in a manger uh -huh. Because there was no room For them in the inn right. And there were in the same country Shepherds abiding in the field there were shepherds abiding in the field. That lets us know the time of year when Christ was born. It was not the winter. So December 25th is not the birth of Christ. When you actually examine history, there's a book called Two Babylons. Christmas is based on paganism. It's based on um, Tammuz. Uh, what's the other name? Nimrod. Nimrod. It's based on idolatry. And today they just call it Christmas. It's a, it's a whole different thing. But we're, uh, is that it? Awesome. We don't. Keeping watch over their flock by night. Uh huh. That's, so it says, it says keeping watch over the flock by night. So we know, we know that that's not talking about the time of Christmas because in the winter, at nighttime, it gets extremely cold. So there's no way that Christ would have been born on December 25th. And also, as we're looking at this, read that again. And go back to Deuteronomy 28 and 32. And then we're going to get uh, Revelation 11 and 8. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 32. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. And thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long. And there shall be no might in thine hand. So what we're reading now, we need another reading another one of those punishments that happened oh, to the Israelites. Why? It says, Your sons shall be given unto it. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given to another people. When you examine our history, the black, when we were in slavery, what was going on with our children? When you look at different movies like Twelve Years of Slave, Roots. Look at our history. Our children were stripped from us and taken from us and sold to the next slave master in the next city. That same thing happened to the natives. You see this one here. This is this on the left. It says peons in Puerto Rico, 1898, photo by George W. Davis. You see all of our children. And notice that, that they were dark. They were dark um, hue. It was dark hue, but this thing had. That's this is what happened. The same thing happened to the natives. The same thing happened to the Hispanics. When, when the conquistadors came over here, what do you think they did? They took their children and sold them to Spain, sold them to Europe, took them away from them, put them in boarding schools. All of those things happened. 
not because somebody had a bright idea, but because it was Bible prophecy. Because it was prophesied in the Bible that the Israelites, when they broke God's commandments, they would go through these harsh conditions, which were the discipline that the Most High God gave unto them because they didn't follow his rules. Um, yeah, and then go to uh, Revelation. Revelation 11 and 8. The book of Revelation, chapter 11, verse 8. So when we look and we think about Christmas, um, Christmas is not, you don't find Christmas in the Bible. There's no one in the Bible where it tells us to celebrate Christmas as a holiday or a holy day. Christmas is not a holy day, let alone it's not our holy day, because this is what happened on that day when we were in slavery. Read. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt. So that's talking about America. That the Sodom and Egypt is talking about America because the policies and the, the laws that are passed in this land are equivalent to those things that were happening in Egypt and, and Sodom. The children of Israel are in slavery and captivity in America. Let's read it again. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city. Which spiritually is called Sodom? Which is spiritually called Sodom. Why? Because there's a Sodom spirit that's pushed in America. That men are taught to be, men are being raised up and geared to live their life as if they're the opposite sex. Same thing with, with our young daughters. They're being raised up in a, in a society where it's okay to live your life as if you, you identify as the opposite sex. But that goes against the Bible. Read. Which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt. And Egypt, why? Because the children of Israel were in slavery when they were in the land of Egypt. Mm -hmm. And today, in America, the children of Israel are slaves. Mm -hmm. right. when, even though today you don't see the chains, you don't see the, the, the rods, the, the irons, and all of that, we're still in slave because what? Why? We're following after the customs of this nation. We're not following the customs of the Bible that we're supposed to be following. Read. Where also our Lord was crucified. And the image of Christ was crucified because in this land, we grow up thinking that Christ was a Caucasian. When there's no, just, let me finish this thought and I'm going to go back to that. There's no scripture in the Bible that shows that Christ was a Caucasian man. The Bible actually teaches otherwise. But I'm going to finish the point, the reason I came to the scripture, then I'm going to come back to that. Read. Verse 9. In day of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half. So why does it say that they're going to see? Is this talking about a literal dead body? It's not. Let's get that real quick and hold this. I'll come right back to 21, Proverbs 21 and 16. So it says they behold their dead body. Anytime we're not keeping the commandment, we classify it as dead because we're not spiritually, we're not connected to our, our, our spiritual source for, for to make it simple. Read that. Proverbs chapter 21, verse 16. <clears throat> the man that wandereth out of the way of understanding. The way of understanding is the Bible, keeping the commandments <clears throat> of God. Read. Shall remain in the congregation of the dead. So when we're not keeping the commandments of God, we're spiritually dead. That's what that verse is referring to. Read it again. Go back. Revelation chapter 11, verse 9. And they of the people and kindreds yes. and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and in half and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. So that means it's showing that the, 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 yes. that's, that's a dispensation of time of us being in slavery and in captivity. Of us going, being in slavery where we're on the slave plantations, building up the houses, building up America. Even until now, we see us in the ghettos, on the reservations. And what are we doing in those reservations? Killing each other. Drinking, getting drunk, strung out on drugs, suffering from depression. That's, our, that's us being spiritually dead. Read. And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice uh -huh. over so them. It says, and they that dwell upon the earth, those that have us in captivity, are oppressing, are... Um, our oppressors, we're going to leave it at that, read. And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them. They said they're going to rejoice over us. Because <laughs> why? Because we're not in rulership. They over us. They have control over us, read. 
and make merry. And they're gonna make merry. What we say? What they will no, say? What we say? What is said amongst our community? Merry Christmas. Read. This is them. They said they're gonna make merry. Read. And shall send gifts one to another. And they're gonna send gifts one to another. Who was those gifts? Our children. Our children were sold to the other nations as as gifts. And they rejoiced in it, where they had our children on on leashes like a dog. It was a, it's a scene. I wish I, I wish I had the scene so we could play it. Again. So read read that again. Read, read twenty eight and uh, thirty two again. Deuteronomy chapter twenty eight verse thirty two. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people, and thine eyes shall look and fail with longing. For them all the day long. So when our children was taken from them, all the all that we could do was long after them. All we could do was look and, and watch them be being stripped from our hands and sold to the next slave master. And we don't. And there shall be no might in thine hand. Meaning we had no military might to get our children back. We had no Hello. economic might. How you doing? Hello. We had no economic might to get our children back. All we could do was cry and long. And it was a forever crime because we never seen our children again. And that goes to show because what happened today where they say we be like they say everybody got a twin. Why do you think that's so? I could I could grow up here in Chicago and then it could be somebody that grew up in LA. I've never met them, never seen them, but we look just alike. <laughs> right. Why do you think that's so? Because our children was taken from us and sold. We never seen them again, but as we grow up, we see we see somebody, and we look at them, and it's like, man, you look just like you could like, be my twin brother. But that's what happened. Our families were stripped apart, <coughs> separated, and we were sold to other slave masters, and now we grew up in two different areas. And then when we see each other, we don't know that we're, we don't know that we're, we're um, Actual family, like blood family, we all related, but we come from different family lines within various tribes. But there's some of us that come from the same exact bloodline within a certain tribe, but because we were separated, we didn't grow up together. But when we see each other, we look just alike. That's why, because of this here. Our children were taken from us and sold as slaves. Go, to, go back to Revelation uh, 11, read verse 10. No, read it right now. Revelation chapter 11, verse 10. And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry uh -huh. and shall send gifts one to another. That was, that's it. Because these two prophets tormented them that dwell on the earth. So when we are in our right, when we are in our right man, because the Bible, the Israelites, the black Hispanic, we are the prophets of God, the men. We are the prophets. We are, when we are here, when we in our right mind, it says, read that last part again. Because these two prophets tormented them that dwell on the earth. So when the Bible says they tormented them that dwell on the earth, I mean, our ways, the ways that the Most High God gave us to keep, it goes against the, the ways of the, of the land, of the world. It goes against it because the ways of the world, even now, uh, you, can, you can pick your, you can, our children, it's, it's coming to a point where the parents don't even have authority or rule over the children. They're giving children rights to be able to make decisions when a child don't even have the mental capacity to be able to make a sound decision because they don't even know what's going on in life. And the, and the, but the parents are being stripped from that, that responsibility of a parent. That's what's going on now. But for, for what we do is, no, the Bible says that the child is supposed to honor their, parent, honor their mother and father. That's, what, that's what's supposed to be done. But the way that this world is going, the child is going to have their own rights where, hey, I can do what I want. And the child don't even, don't, the child don't even understand life yet. But they're giving children laws. So they can choose their own gender now. Right. So the child, they choose, they get, oh, I feel like a, 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 young, a young man is growing up as a man, or oh, I feel like I'm a woman. Right. And if the parent don't agree with it, they can be punished. But we speak against that because the Bible doesn't tell us that. 
That's why it says that they tormented the earth. But this is this is that. This is this is Christmas. This is what happened while we were in slavery. Yes, and I'm gonna show you a clip where they show a young black boy being given as a gift to one of the demonic white women. <laughs> So this is what was going on in slavery. We were the Christmas gifts. You see, she got a chain on his neck, running around with him. But today we say Christmas is Christ's birthday, and we, we hey, it's, it's about the children. But this is what was going. This is what was happening to our children in slavery. But today we blindly forgot about these things, and we blindly celebrate a day that has nothing to do with us. Get Jeremiah chapter ten. We celebrate a day that has nothing to do with us. Everything about Christmas, it has nothing to do with us. It's, it's just that's just the plainest way it could be. But we we say, oh, it's for the kids, and we can get, we, so we can give gifts and things like that. But we don't know that we're we're leading our children on a path to destruction because we're teaching them the ways of our oppressors. We're teaching them the traditions of men. We're not teaching them, thus saith the Lord. We're teaching them, thus saith the man. When that's not what we're supposed to be doing. So, and that's why we go through the things that we go through. That's why we leave. That's why the so-called blacks, Hispanics, Native Americans, we leave. Even though we're called the minority, we leave in the STDs. We leave in, in um, heart disease, high blood pressure. All of those various things go on because we broke God's commandments. Read that. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 10, verse 1. Hear ye the word which the Lord speaketh unto you, O house of Israel. Uh -huh. Thus saith the Lord, learn not the way of the heathen. So the Bible instructs us to not learn the way of the heathen. Meaning anything that's outside of this Bible, we're not supposed to partake in. We're supposed to examine it. And if it don't line up with the Bible, we're not supposed to do it. Read. And be not dismayed at the signs of heaven. Uh -huh. For the heathen are dismayed at them. The other nations worship the sun, the moon, the stars as gods. When they were the stars and the sun, stars and the suns, the moon and the stars were created to be a sign for us, but we're not supposed to worship them. Read. For the customs of the people are vain. Uh huh. For one cutteth a tree out of the forest. So one cutteth a tree. Remember, so we're reading the ways of the heathen. It says one cutteth a tree out of the forest. What holiday do we do we do that today? Hmm? What holiday today do we do this? Read it again. For the customs of the people are vain. Uh -huh. For one cutteth a tree out of the forest. So what custom what custom or holiday today do we go and cut a tree out of the forest? Christmas. Christmas. Read. The work of the hands of the workmen with the axe. So it's the work of the hands of the workmen with the axe. Cut a tree out. And we, today you got all type of stuff. You got fake Christmas. You got fake trees and all type of stuff. But essentially, this is what it was. With some of you all are from this, uh, from Chicago, they probably still do it today. They used to sell um, Christmas trees off of 95th and Stony Island. Right on the corner, there was a whole lot of live trees, evergreen trees. Read. They deck it with silver and gold. What holiday do we do that? We deck, deck it with silver and gold. Silver? What's the name? What's that song? Silver, silver and gold. gold. Yeah. Like you know, <laughs> yeah. But this, what, what holiday is this, this, this describing? It's Christmas. It's Christmas. Read. They fasten it with nails they and with hammers. They fasten it with nails and hammers. So because they cut it out of the, they, because they cut it from its roots, now they got to, Nail it to the ground. Now they got the Christmas tree stand to make it stand up right. Read. That it move not. That it move not. They did it so it don't move. Read. They are upright as the palm tree. They are upright as the palm tree. So back then they used the palm tree. Then it came to the fir tree. Now today they use the evergreen tree. Read. But speak not. But it speak not. It has no power. And our people, a lot of things, we're, just, we're so deceived that we think that, oh, I'm not worshiping the tree. But you put the gifts under the tree. That's a form of worship. It's not, it's not for the children. You're putting a tree up. You're you running your light bill up because you got all these lights on the, on the yes. house and all of this. Read. Brother. They must needs be born because they cannot go. Uh huh. 
Be not afraid of them, for they cannot do evil. Neither also is it in them to do good. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So when we look, when you examine the Bible, it says the Bible says, "Learn not the way of the heathen." Celebrating Christmas is the way of the heathen. It's, it goes against the Bible. It goes against the commandments. Read Colossians two. The book of Colossians, chapter two, and verse eight. Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit, after tra after the tradition of men. So if the Bible says, read it again. Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy. So it says, it says, beware, lest any man spoil you. When you think of spoiled milk, is that is milk? When milk is spoiled, is it is it good or bad? It's bad. Would you drink it? Would you? If you got some spoiled milk in the refrigerator, you gonna drink it? No, you're not. So now it says, read it again. Beware. Lest any man spoil you. So it says, beware lest any man spoil you. So by us celebrating Thanksgiving, celebrating Christmas, we've been spoiled. Meaning the Most High God don't want nothing to do with us because we're serving idolatry. And the Bible tells us not to do that. Read. Through philosophy and vain deceit. So it's philosophy and vain deceit. What's that vain to see? Oh, it's for the children. Oh, Thanksgiving, giving, oh, you got to be thankful. When that turkey represents the body, the, the body that was taken of the Native American, you know, what the cranberry sauce represents, the blood that was shed, and the stuff, and what was the stuff? The guts, the brain, and all of that. So the, the, all, everything about Thanksgiving is highlighting the destruction of the Native Americans, but yet today we, we celebrate it and the, 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 the deception is that we say, oh, it's just the day I'm giving thanks, I'm spending time with my family. No, you're, you're, you're partaking and you partaking in the holiday. You're celebrating the holiday. If you partaking in the festivities, you're celebrating the holiday, which has nothing to do with us. Um, well, that, that's it on that right. No, sir. Read on. After the tradition of men. And it's the tradition of men. Because the holiday, when you look at the holidays, Thanksgiving and Christmas, can you find those holidays in the Bible? You can't. So that's how we know that they are the traditions of men. Uh, we don't. After the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, uh -huh. and not after Christ. So, so celebrating these holidays that they have set up, we're not following Christ. We're not following the Bible. Thereby, that's why we're going through the things that we go through. Go, go back to Deuteronomy 28 and 33. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 33. The fruit of thy land and all thy labors. Shall a nation which thou knowest not eat up, and thou shalt only, and thou shalt be only oppressed and crushed always, uh -huh. so that thou shalt be mad for the sight of thine eyes which thou shalt see. Go to the next slide. So we say, uh, the fruit of thy land and all thy labors shall a nation eat up. We were in the in the in the in the sugarcane fields and the cotton fields doing all this hard work, hard labor, but did we bear the fruit of it? Even today, many times we work 40, 50, 60 hours a week, and yet we still don't have enough to get to take care of our family. We have just barely enough to take care of our family. We have just barely enough. Why? Because after we work those 50 40, 50, 60 hours, we get our check and what we gotta do? We gotta pay our mortgage, we gotta pay our rent, we gotta cover our food, we gotta cover the light bill, we gotta cover all those things, let alone the first thing to come off of it is the taxes. Taxes get taken and then we have very little to be able to actually enjoy the fruit of our labor. We don't, we don't, we don't have enough. And then what, what else is put in our face? 75 inch TVs. Oh, get this new TV. Get this new car. Every year it's a new car coming out. Every year it's a new phone coming out. That has, that has very small 
differences from the phone before it, but all of this stuff is put in our face and we follow after it. Everything is set up to keep us at the bottom. But those things are happening, it goes right back to it because we broke God's commandments. Go to the next slide. The Lord shall bring thee and thy king, which thou shalt set over thee unto a nation which neither thou nor thy fathers have known. And there shalt thou serve other gods, wood and stone. So one of those curses also we had when we were in the we were when we were in Africa. We had we was we were scattered over the, we was we was throughout various parts of Africa and we had kings that were set over us. So when they came against us and took over. It says, the Lord shall bring thee and thy king which thou shalt set over thee unto a nation which neither thou nor thy fathers have known. The major one that we know about is us coming over here to the land of America. But we all, before the transatlantic slave trade, you had the sub-Saharan slave trade, where we were under, in the slavery under the Arabs. They had us in slavery. And what did we learn? We learned their ways, their customs, just like today. And it says, and there thou shalt serve other gods, wood and stone. So meaning that we're not going to be serving, we're no longer going to be serving the God of this Bible. Now we're going to be serving wood and stone. Let's go to the next slide, let's see what that wood and stone. This is, this is that wood. That wood is talking about the cross. Christianity, Catholicism. That's what we serve. And you know, how do you know we serve that? Because majority... When you go through the streets of Chicago, how many of y'all are native to Chicago? Anyone native to like Indiana, Detroit? But whatever, whatever, wherever, whether you were in Chicago, Detroit, uh, Indianapolis, no matter where you was at, what was set up in all of our communities? Liquor stores, but what else? Churches. Churches. If you go to if you go in Chicago, you go from 95th and Ashland to 79th and Ashland, and I guarantee you, you're probably going to pass about 10 to 20 churches. But when you you look in our communities, all of those churches are in the community. But is the community benefiting or, or getting better as a result of the church? No. You see the church. Some churches you see the church building getting bigger, getting more extravagant. You see the pastor with a Benz or a Bentley or a Maserati, but yet the community is not benefiting from that church being in there. That's why it's so many of them. That's so we're serving another God. We're not serving the God of the Bible because the, 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 the church is not showing the people the laws of God, the ways to, the laws of God. The law says thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not murder. But yet when you look at the streets of Chicago, what goes on in the streets of Chicago? Murder. It's a high murder rate. Somebody getting robbed all the time. Mm -hmm. But what's the purpose of 20 churches in, in, in what, 20 blocks if they're not teaching the people how they're supposed to serve God? Uh, yeah, Malachi 2 and 7. The book of Malachi chapter 2 verse 7. For the priest's lips should keep knowledge. So it says the priest's lips should keep knowledge. Or the spiritual leaders his mouth should keep knowledge. And what is that knowledge that he should be keeping? And they should seek the law at his mouth. So the people, the purpose of the church is for the people to go and seek God's law. Hey, how are we supposed to serve God? But all too often, sadly, we go into the churches and they tell us that we don't have to keep God's law. They tell us that all you got to do is believe in what Christ did. Believe that Christ died for your sins. But it's, it's the blood. But then... You don't have to keep the commandments. When that's not what the Bible says, read Revelation 14 and 12. The Bible doesn't tell us that. The Bible tells us that we got to believe in Christ, that he was a sacrifice for the nation of Israel, but we also got to believe in the, the, the um, we also got to believe in keeping the commandments. Read that. Revelation chapter 14, verse 12. Here is the patience of the saints. Uh -huh. Here are they that keep the commandments of God. So here are they. This is Revelation. This is the last book in the Bible. It says, "Here are this is the patience of the saints. So our patience, our hope, is in what? Read it again. Here is the patience of the saints. 
Here are they that keep the commandments of God. These are they that keep the commandments of God and read. And the faith of Jesus. And the faith of Jesus. So you can't have one without the other. You can't say I believe in Jesus, but then say, but also say that you don't have to keep the, the old covenant. That's why Deuteronomy read 28. Read that. What was that? 36? Yes, sir. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 36. The Lord shall bring thee and thy king, which thou set up over thee, unto a nation which neither thou nor thy fathers have known. Uh -huh. And there shalt thou serve other gods, wood and stone. So that's how you know when we, when we go on to these churches of today, you're serving another god. You're not serving the god of the Bible because the god of the Bible tells us to keep his commandments. Read that. I mean, go to the next slide, man. Or John 14 and 15. These are things that this is the image that's set up in our in our Bibles and in our community. This is see this this statue and image is of Caesar Bourget. This is not Christ. But yet, in many in most of the churches, many of them big Bibles that you get, they got the images in it. When you open it to that first page, this is what you see. Read that. The book of St. John, chapter 14, verse 15. And this when you read the Bible. This is in these words are in red. This is Christ himself speaking. Read. If ye love me, keep my commandments. So Christ said out his own mouth, if you love me, keep my commandments. And everything that Christ told was telling the people to do was what the Father told them. So he wasn't he wasn't saying nothing different than the prophets before. He was still directing us to keep the commandments of God. And even when Christ walked the earth, there were these books that we read now wasn't even wasn't even uh in place. So what was Christ teaching from? He was teaching from the Old Testament as we know it today. He was teaching us the laws, the commandments. Read that. You got it? Yes, sir. The book of St. John, chapter 6, verse 38. For I came down from heaven, uh -huh. not to do my own will. So Christ said, I came down from heaven not to do my own thing. I didn't come to do my own thing. I came to do what? But the will of him that sent me. But the will of him that sent me. So Christ just came down to do the will of the Most High. Let's get that in Malachi. So if Christ came to do, if, if Christ came to do the will of his Father, let's see what how the Father's person, how the uh, let's see how the Father's personality is. If he's schizophrenic, or if he changes himself, huh? Oh, no, no. Uh, Malachi would say I change not. I think it's three and seven. The book of Malachi, chapter 3, and verse 7. Verse 6. For I am the Lord. So it says, for I am the Lord, read. I change not. He does what? I change not. So when Christ was walking the earth and he said, I came to do the will of my Father, he was teaching the commandments. Christ came to fulfill the things that pertain to him, which was him sacrificing his life for the nation of Israel, meaning that we don't have to sacrifice no more. But we still have to keep the Sabbath day. We still have to apply, thou shalt not steal. We still have to apply, thou shalt not bear false witness, or thou shalt not lie. Thou shalt not commit adultery. We still have to do those things, because when you take those things out, what do you, what do you see? The black community. Lawless. Single parent households. Our young men gang banging and killing each other in the streets even on the reservations, even in the uh, Hispanic neighborhood. You have the Latin kings against the, uh, the two sixes and the Satan disciples and all of this. We fight the Latin kings against the GDs. We're fighting and killing each other because it's being taught in the, in the churches that we don't have to keep the commandments. And that's serving another God. That's us serving another God. What's the next slide? Don't go there yet. Give Revelation 1. Let's read Revelation 1 and 1. Revelation chapter 1, verse 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him. So it says the revelation of Jesus Christ. So now we're reading the revelation. It says the revelation of Jesus Christ. So this is the revealing of Jesus Christ. Who he was, who he is, how he looked. Jump up to verse 10. Verse 10. No, straight to the point, 14. Verse 14. His head. And his hairs were white like wool. So this is the description of Christ. Actually, you know what? Start up at 10. Verse 10. 
I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet. So this is this is John speaking. He's saying, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day, man. And he was, in, he was, it was the Sabbath day. Him keeping the commandments. That's what him and he, he was in the spirit on the Lord's day, meaning he was in the spirit keeping the commandments on the Sabbath day. Read. Saying, I am Alpha and Omega. So the voice that he heard said, I am Alpha and Omega. I'm the beginning and the end. Read. The first and the last. Uh -huh. And what thou seest, write it in a book. So he's telling John, what you see, write it in the book. Why? Wow. So for today, for us to be able to see, because when this Bible was written, uh, when you read Isaiah 46, it said that the Most High God declared the end from the beginning. So a lot of these things were written for us today, for us to be able to look back and be like, okay, this is who I am. This is who Christ was. This is how he looked. This is what I'm supposed to be doing. Read. And sent it unto the seven churches, uh -huh. which are in Asia, unto Ephesus, and unto Smyrna, uh -huh. and unto Pergamos, and unto Thyatira. Thyatira, uh -huh. and unto Sardis, and unto Philadelphia, and unto Laodicea. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me. So now John says, I turned to see the voice that spoke to me. Read. And being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. So he said, when he turned around, he saw seven golden candlesticks, which is the, the, the menorah of the Israelites. Read. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one light unto the Son of Man. So now he says, in the midst of them seven golden candlesticks, I saw one light unto the Son of Man. When Christ walked the earth, they called him the Son of Man. Remember, he walked with Christ. So when he said one like the Son of Man, he's seen Christ. He will turn around and see Christ. That's what he's saying. Read. Clothed with a garment down to the foot. And when he's seen him, he's clothed with a garment down to the foot. Read. And girt about the paps with a golden girdle. Uh-huh. His head and his hairs were white like wool. So now he's saying his head and his hairs were white like wool, meaning the hair on his head was white like wool, and the hair on his face was white like wool. What tech, who has woolly textured hair in this earth? Black people. Black people. So what, so is this, go to the next one. So when we look at what's been shown to us all our lives, this description is way off, because this is not woolly hair. But this is what's been shown to us all our lives. And all these Bibles, you open the Bible, and this is what you see. And this is actually Caesar Bourget. The, what is it, second son of Pope Alexander the Third? Fourth. Fourth. Fourth, yeah. Oh, right here. Caesar Bourget. He was the illegitimate son of Pope Alexander the Fourth, Rodrigo Bourget, and his long term mistress, Venosa de Catina. He is the model for the white image of Jesus Christ, replacing the true image and creating lasting confusion for our people. Because what the thing about it, we are a visual people. We have an imagination. So imagine, if from your from your childhood all the way up to your adulthood, when you open up a Bible, you see this is Christ. What is that frame in your mind? That God is is that, that this is God. So when you look at your brother, you look at your sister, oh, this is just another nigga. You ain't nobody. So it creates a, it, it messes up the image that we have of ourselves. So that's what we got low self-esteem. We suffer from depression. We suffer from all of those things because we don't see no value in ourselves because this is what's been pushed on us. Like we're less of a people. When we are the greatest people, we we the greatest people on earth, but this is what's been shown to us. Hold that real quick. Get read Deuteronomy 7 and 6 real quick. Because that's why we don't have, that's why we don't esteem each other. Because when we look at each other, we don't see no greatness. Because that's what's been instilled in us through our slavery, through our captivity, through the hardships that we have gone through. We just see ourselves as nothing. When all in all, the many things that we go through is because it's actually because we are great people. We just we just separated from our God. We lost sight of who we who we were and how we supposed to be and how we supposed to act. Read. Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 6 For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God uh -huh. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people 
unto himself. The black, Hispanic, and Native Americans, we are special people unto God. Read. Above all people that are upon the face of the earth. We are above all people that are on the face of the earth. That's what the Bible tells us. Go back to the, uh, Revelation. Read. Revelation chapter 1, verse 13. Verse 14. His head and his hairs were white like wool, uh -huh. as white as snow. Mm -hmm. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. And his eyes were as a flame of fire, meaning he's referring back to him drinking wine. Because when you drink wine, the whites of your eyes turn red. But Christ was not a wine off. He drunk wine in moderation. Because it's not a sin to drink wine. It comes simple when you get drunk. But then read it again. And read on, read on, read on. And his feet like unto fine brass. And his feet like fine brass. What color is brass? Hmm? No. Nah. Think of a, a copper or a penny. What, what color is that? What color is that? that I could barely see it because it, 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 it matches the color of your skin. And read that again. And his feet like unto fine brass. His feet like unto vine, fine brass. So brown. Read. As if they burned in a furnace. And then it says his feet was like fine brass as if they burned in a furnace. And notice the key word there is it, as if it burned in a furnace. Not was heated in a furnace. It said burned in a furnace. When you burn anything, what color does it turn? Black. So Christ <coughs> lets us know that Christ was a very dark man. Read. And his voice as the sound of many waters. And he spoke with power. That's why when, when he told he was on the earth, he'll be on the he'll be on the boat in the in the, in the sea speaking to thousands of people. And they was able to hear him. Because he spoke with authority. He spoke with a loud voice. He spoke like a trumpet. Was that it on that? Yes, sir. And then and then go get uh, Matthew six and because a lot of times when you read this, a lot of people say, well, that's him in his glory. Oh, that's, that's him in the heaven. But let's read the Lord's Prayer real quick. Because what we have to understand, what John seen was literal. That's how Christ looks. Whether he was in the earth or in the heaven, this is how he looks. Read that. And because he didn't look like this, because you can't find this description in the Bible nowhere. Go to the, the book of the next slide. Okay, read that. Matthew chapter 6, verse 9. After this manner, therefore pray ye. So this is when the, when when Christ was teaching the disciples how to pray. They asked him how to they asked him how to pray. He, this, is, this is what he told them. Read. Our Father, which art in heaven, uh -huh. hallowed be thy name. Uh -huh. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on so the earth. We, so we know that when we read the description of Christ, this is when Christ was seated at the right hand of God. When John seen him, he was down the communion with John, but this is at the period of time where he was seated at the right hand of God. But read. Thy will be done in the earth. Thy will be done in earth. Read. As is it in heaven. As it is in heaven. Meaning that just like it's going to come a point in time where the kingdom in heaven is going to be right on the earth. And it says as it is. So as we read what we read in Revelation 1 and 14, the description of Christ. As it, as it said it is, that's how Christ looked. Because when he comes back, that's how he's going to look. When, he, when Christ comes back to deliver the nation of Israel, he's going to come back and he's going to be a black man, like the, describe, like the Bible describes. What we've learned here is the philosophies of men. What, what? To keep us low, to keep us down, to keep us under <coughs> all people, to keep us in a state of mind where we don't see the greatness that's in each other. Um, next slide. <clears throat> Read that verse 65. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 65. And among these nations shalt thou find no ease, neither shall the sole of thy feet have rest. So just, just thinking about this. Mm. We 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 uh, see somebody running and we just start running. Yeah. Don't even know who we're running from. We just run. That's what this is talking about. And among these nations, thou shalt find no ease, neither shall the sole of thy foot have rest. When we look at our young men, that's in the streets. They're always looking over their shoulder. 
they always fearful for their life. Whether it's whether it's fear of the police coming and putting them in the back of the, the um, squad car and taking them somewhere and beating the crap out of them and leaving them in the alley, or getting pulled over and getting shot down by the police, or they brother killing them and shooting them. It says, among these nations thou shalt find no ease, neither shall the sole of thy foot have rest. We're always worrying. That's what leads a lot of us into depression. Because we're always worrying, worrying, worrying about how we're going to pay the next bill, how we're going to uh, take care of our family, how we're going to survive. Read. But the Lord shall give thee there a trembling heart and filling of eyes and sorrow of mind. When we look at the the, the black community, the Hispanic community, and the native community, this is there. Give, give you there a trembling heart, failing of eyes, and sorrow of mind. Why do you, that's why we oftentimes are strung out on drugs, because we're trying to smoke our life away, because we don't want to really face it, so we end up smoking, or we end up drinking, because it makes us forget the pain. It makes us forget what's going on, and that's why a lot of our people they drink when they, they drink all day. So that's what keeps their mind off the suffering, the pain, the various things. That's what this scripture is talking about. And even even our, even the native the Native Americans, many of our people don't know, but even on them uh, reservations, they got gangs on them reservations. They actually are alcoholics. They they drink. Why? Because this is their land. This vast land that they had, now they reserved to one section. In a very, and not even in all the cities. They, they, they reduced to certain parts. Like they, they, at one point, they had, they had land in Illinois and it was pushed out of Illinois. Trembling of heart, failing of eyes, and sorrow of mind. That's depression. Uh, what's the other one? It's another one that's similar to depression. I can't think of that. Uh, PTSD, all of those things, because when you think about it, they call they call us the minority. If we're the minority, how do we lead in percentage of women? whether it's STDs, whether it's uh, heart disease? How do we lead all of these diseases in percentage, but we're the minority? That lets you know that we're not the minority. We're the majority on this earth. But we, we're suffering from the curses. We're suffering, suffering from we suffering the, the punishment from breaking God's commandments. Uh, read on, verse sixty-six. And thy life shall hang in doubt before thee, and thou shalt fear day and night, and shall have no assurance of thy life. This marks our life. We we don't know whether it's from uh, the the high the high murder rate. We don't know if we're gonna live the next day. Or from diseases. We got heart, we got uh high blood pressure. We don't know if that blood pressure medication is gonna work. We don't we don't we're not sure if we're gonna live to the next day because we got we got we on all these medications. We're not sure. This is a result of us breaking God's command. Read on. Verse 67. In the morning thou shalt say, with God. It were even. That means we wake up in the morning and we hoping for the day to end. We wake up in the morning and in the morning we wake up. Instead of instead of thinking about how productive we can be, we're thinking about, man, I can't wait till this day over with. Read on. And at even thou shalt say, with God it were morning. And then at night we, man, I can't wait till the morning. So day in and day out, we're just hoping for, we just hoping for the time. I mean, I just hope this life is over with. Because we're going through so much suffering and pain. Read. For the fear of thine heart, wherewith thou shalt fear. Uh huh. And for the sight of thine eyes, which thou shalt see. So for the fear of thine heart, because we don't know, we have we live in fear of our life. We don't know if we're gonna live today and be gone tomorrow. We don't know if we gonna we don't know if our our children gonna live today and be gone tomorrow. Our lives is based on fear of the wrong thing. And that's what we have to return back to keeping the commandments of God. Go to the next slide. <clears throat> Read. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again 
with ships. So now we've seen it. It says the Lord shall bring you into Egypt again with ships. When the Israelites were in Egypt, what were they doing? When the Israelites were in Egypt, when you look at the when the Israelites were in Egypt, what were they doing? Were they building their own kingdom? No, they were, when the Israelites were in Egypt, they were in slavery. They were in slavery. They were served in hard bondage. So now read that first, first part again. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. Uh -huh. By the way whereof I spake unto thee. Thou shalt see it no more again. So it says that the Lord will bring us into Egypt again with ships by the way whereof I thou shalt well, by the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. Get Exodus 14 and 13. The book of Exodus, chapter 14, verse 13. And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he, which he will shew to you today. For the Egyptians, whom ye have seen today, ye shall see them again, no more forever. So when we were delivered out of the land of Egypt, the Most High said that we would never see the Egyptians again. So now, go back to Deuteronomy 28, 68. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. So this is how we know that. This is not talking about the physical land of Egypt. Even so, it says with ships. When you examine our history, how do we get to the coast of America? Ships. On transatlantic cargo slave ships. So this lets us know, this is further proof that this Bible is our history book. Because it details our, it, it details our history. The history that we have in the history books, when you look at the Bible, it's all there. So we went into Egypt or slavery again, which ships read, By the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. Uh -huh. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bondmen and bondwomen. And then when we got off those slave ships, what they do with it? They sold us. They sold us on the auction blocks. Go to the next slide. They, go, they sold us on the auction blocks. And this is the Bible that we're reading. So that means, that lets us know that we are the Israelites. And not only we, when I say we, I'm not talking about just the blacks. Because it also happened to the Native Americans and the, the Hispanics. Uh, this is one image of us on the slave ships. Read, I mean, the next slide. This is a detail of how they stacked us on those slave ships. These were cargo ships. But they put us at the bottom. They had us separated with the women, the boys, the men. Just imagine how, how bad those conditions were. We were stocked on the bottom of those ships like sardines. And then this is, like, when I say this, 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 this happened to us, this is the northern kingdom. You have an uh, Indian here. You see the bowls on his back being brought over to Spain. Look at, back to the king. So the same thing, the same way we were, took off the west coast of Africa, and brought the slaves over to this land, the natives were brought to, took it to Spain. They were taken to Portugal, Europe. The same thing, they went through the same exact thing that we went through. But we don't, a lot of times we don't know these things because we're just living things through our perspective, the things that we've been through. The natives were also Where took into slavery on ships. They went through the same things that we went through. Right? The Northern Kingdom slavery. Columbus viewed the Taino themselves as a way to amass his personal wealth. He selected 500 to be exported to Spain as slaves and 500 to serve as slaves to the Spanish on the island. So some he sent over to Spain as slaves and some they were slaves on the island. That's called colonialism. The land was taken from them and then they had to work that land. Read. Columbus proudly boasted to the Spanish monarchs about the slave potential and its economic benefits. Columbus would capture and export more Indian slaves, about 5,000, than any other single individual. In addition to capturing the Indians as slaves, the Spanish also hunted the Indians for sport and slaughtered them for dog food. The Spanish also viewed Taino women as their sex slaves. Read um, 28 and... 
30? Is it 30? Is that wise? Uh, the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 30, 29 or 30. Verse 30. Thou shalt betroth a wife. So and we'll a, get a wife, read. And another man shall lie with her. And another man shall lie with her. That's what we read here. It says the Spanish also view Taino women as their sex slaves. Same thing that was going on in our slave plantations where they were taking our wives from us and taking them in the house and raping them, sleeping with them. Same thing happened to the Northern, the, the Spanish, the, the Hispanics and the Native Americans. Uh, read on. Thou shalt build in house. And thou shalt not dwell therein. Uh -huh. Thou shalt plant a vineyard, and shalt not gather the grapes thereof. That's what this image is showing. You see the natives here. You see them up here, cutting down the trees and carrying them. See all of all of here is. Give me that in Lamentations. Uh, you see the natives. Basically doing slave, the same slave labor on the land as theirs. Uh, go to the next slide. The book of Lamentations, about chapter 5, verse 1. Remember, O Lord, what has come upon us. Consider and behold our reproach. Our inheritance is turned to strangers. This is the natives. This is what they coin Thanksgiving. This they, they land was taken from. Read. Our houses to aliens. Uh -huh. We are orphans and fatherless. Our mothers are as widows. So this is what happened as a result of us breaking the commandment. Read Leviticus 19 and 11. The book of Leviticus chapter 19 verse 11. So the solution to, to change these conditions, to change these issues, for one, we have to repent in order with Israel. Read. Ye shall not steal. We should not steal. This is a commandment that we got to keep in our community. Because imagine if we don't steal, ain't going to be no robbers. They're not going to be robbing and stealing nobody. Then, in turn, there's nobody going to get murdered because they didn't, because the person didn't want to give up their rims. So now ain't nobody going to get murdered. Read. Neither deal falsely. Neither deal falsely. The lying, the stealing, the cheating. Because that's, that's what leads to a lot of the murders. Read. Neither lie one to another. Neither lie one to another. Jump to verse 17. Verse 17. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Uh-huh. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. So we, so we, so the way we're supposed to conduct ourselves, we don't supposed to hate our brother. If our brother sinned against, if my brother stole something against, from me, I go and talk to him. And we resolve the issue, and then we keep moving. Because taking up a gun and going to shoot him is not solving the problem. All that's going to do is go read the next verse real quick. Thou shalt not avenge. All that's going to cause is revenge. So now... This brother get killed, now his cousin, like, you killed my cousin, you killed my cousin. And it's just going to be a oh, never-ending cycle. But if we apply his commandment, those things will stop happening. So the solution to change the, to the problem, we have to repent, as, as knowing that we are the Israelites, and we have to start applying these commandments to, to our lives. No stealing, no 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 murdering. That's, that's, the, that's the solution to the problems in our community. What is the nation? Nation is men leading by example. Nation is family.